very good day. My name is Abhilash and I am from the AD Solutions team here at Manage Engine and I would be your presenter for today. Now before we get started, I'd like to thank you all for joining in. Thank you so much for taking out the time and thank you for being a part of today's webinar. Now before we get started with today's webinar, I would like to run a quick audio video check because I want to make sure that everybody out here today is able to hear me well and is able to see the screen well. So let's start off with a quick video check. Now if you can see the screen, if you can see the title, my name and my email, that's abhi at manageengine.com, please punch in yes via the chat box. Just say yes, just say okay via the chat box so I can confirm that you can see the screen well and clear. I repeat, if you can see the screen well and clear, just punch in yes via the chat box, please. If you can see the title, my name, and my email, just punch in yes via the chat box. I'm just waiting for a few confirmations before I can proceed. All right, so if you can hear my voice, if my audio is well and clear and audible, just punch in yes via the chat box, please. Just say yes, just say great, just say okay via the chat box. So I can confirm and I can proceed that you are able to see the screen well and that the audio is well and clear without any distortion. Alright, thank you so much and let's go ahead and jump in. Now before we get started again, a few housekeeping steps that I will need to run through. Number one is that all the source links are embedded within the slides themselves and number two is that the slide deck would be emailed to you post the webinar. So if you've got any questions, please keep them coming in via chat. Or you could always reach out to me on my email at abi at manageengine.com. That's abi at manageengine.com and I would be more than happy to help you out. So yes, today's webinar's topic is limit active directory attack radius with efficient management practices. Now the reason I chose to speak about this topic today is because efficient and effective management of active directory can come a long way in protecting your organization against security breaches. Now you may have the strongest of security protocols implemented, you may have the strictest of firewall rules, and you may have implemented all the latest security patches to your systems, but if the way you manage your active directory is not secure, that could lead to a security breach. A single mismanagement step, a single mismanagement vulnerability, a small mistake can either cause a breach or can lead to the spread of a breach or can aid in the spread of a breach. So that brings me to today's agenda. I will be talking about active directory mismanagement. Right now I said that active directory mismanagement leaves organizations vulnerable to a security breach. Let's exactly see why. Let's exactly see a few scenarios as to how this works and let's see how active directory mismanagement can act as a speeding agent, as a catalyst for security breaches. And in the second part of today's webinar, let's go ahead and deep dive and understand the concept of attack radius because the title is limit the attack radius, right? So let's go ahead and see what the attack radius is all about, how the cycle works. And in the third part of today's webinar, I will be showing you a live security attack simulation. Now, the reason behind the security attack simulation is just to prove my earlier point where I mentioned that a single mismanagement step a single mismanagement vulnerability can give an attacker access to your organization's internal network. 
and in order to overcome mismanagement vulnerabilities that occur within your organization, we will employ a three-step approach where first, we will learn to gain insights into our infrastructure. Valuable insights into the critical parts of our infrastructure where mismanagement vulnerabilities occur. And then we will learn to fix these vulnerabilities. After which, we will see how to secure our permissions. And by permissions here, I mean permissions on your active directory objects and files and folders. The reason we are doing this is because mismanaged permissions are another prime reason for security breaches. And finally, we will set up complete backup and recovery just to double check safety, just to have a plan B, just to have a safety net in the event of a security breach or a data corruption. So active directory mismanagement. Is active directory mismanagement leaving organizations vulnerable to security breaches? Is active directory mismanagement a catalyst or a speeding agent for cyber attacks? Here are a few statistics. Skyport Systems Analysis finds that active directory mismanagement unknowingly exposes 90% of enterprises to security breaches. A few of the findings here included where 40% of enterprises allowed unspecified workstation access to domain controllers. And 50% of organizations use the same account that they use to configure Active Directory for everything else. On June 13, 2019, the US Patent and Trademark Office, the USPTO during a recent audit was found to have an, ina an inadequate configuration of Active Directory. It allowed access access permissions. It allowed the usage of weak user credentials, unsecure storage of credentials. Now, I can go on and on about active directory mismanagement and how it can be vulnerable for your organization, but the truth is there is a serious disconnect between perception and reality, and most organizations are simply not aware of how vulnerable, how weak their active directory really is. So this is the blast radius that I was talking about. This is the attack radius. Let's go ahead and see how this cycle actually works. So this is how it works, right? An attacker basically gains access to an end user system or an end user turns rope. This user wants to watch your organization bleed. So once an attacker is able to gain access to an end user system, the next immediate step is to perform reconnaissance, survey and analyze the domain or the forest for any mismanagement vulnerabilities. And once a mismanagement vulnerability is found, these vulnerabilities are exploited to gain access to critical resources. For instance, critical servers that have access to sensitive data, privileged users who have access to confidential data within the company or the organization. Now with this picture, it must be clear that more mismanagement vulnerabilities, more mistakes that are made while managing Active Directory give more opportunities to attacker and not just that the more mismanagement vulnerabilities that we have within our organization can aid in the faster spread of a breach. Now I keep saying that attackers leverage mismanaged permissions and mismanaged permissions put your organization's security at risk, but how exactly do attackers leverage mismanaged permissions? Here are a few ways attackers can take advantage of mismanaged permissions. Number one, a pretty straightforward and a simple way, modify group memberships. This is the easiest way to elevate privileges. An attacker, for example, can simply add a backdoor user to an administrative group or to a privileged group. This way, the backdoor user has access to critical resources within the organization and the attacker in turn has access to the backdoor user's account. An attacker can also create invisible users or in more technical terms, dynamic users. So these users have an entry TTL or a time to live, right? So an attacker can create this user add that user to, let's say, a domain administrator group, right? And once the TTL expires and the attacker has uh, achieved the access that he or she required, this user account is automatically removed from Active Directory, completely erased from the face of Active Directory. And that's right, there is no logging within the event viewer when the group is, when the user, I'm sorry, is deleted from Active Directory. Another way attackers can take advantage of mismanaged permissions is by creating lots and lots of users. An attacker can create multiple backdoor entries within an organization. So if one user is caught, 
an attacker can immediately use the other account. Now you might immediately ask me a question. If an attacker goes about creating users of backdoor entries in an organization's network, won't the administrator realize? Won't the logs be pushed out by with Windows native auditing? Right? Won't this be a red signal? My answer to that question is no, because there are ways that attackers can inject backdoor data into an organization without a peep from the Windows auditing into the security logs of native Windows auditing. An example for this kind of an attack is the Mimikatz DC shadow attack, where replication permissions between domain controllers are leveraged to inject backdoor entries into an organization's network, but at the same time record no changes within the native logging. Another way attackers can take advantage is by using nested memberships. So let me illustrate this using an example, right? There is a domain admin group. There is a group A and there is a group B, right? So you add a group A to the domain administrative group and you add a group B to group A and you add your backdoor user or your compromised account to group B. So typically what organizations do is they monitor only the privileged groups, the direct members of the privileged groups, but they do not check the indirect or the nested memberships. So this way, an attacker can hide a set of compromised accounts with the desired access. And finally, access to resources and data. Attackers leverage accounts that they have compromised to perform discovery, not just with an active directory, but also file systems, databases, and custom third-party applications. Now time for the security attack simulation that I was talking about. But before we get started, I would like to exercise a word of caution that if you are planning to perform this attack, please do it on your test machines and please ensure that you are very alert and cautious before you proceed with the attack. All right, so before we get started, I'd like to remind you that the reason behind this attack is just to prove my earlier point where I mentioned that a single mismanagement vulnerability is all it takes for an attacker to gain access into your internal network. All right, the scenario here, the, the assumption that we are performing this attack on is that organizations has deployed LAPS, a local administrator password solution to manage the local administrator passwords. Now, why have I chosen LAPS? We know that local administrator accounts are the most powerful accounts with widespread access over the domain and over the local systems. Right? And these accounts generally are created while setting up Windows Server or Active Directory, so they have weak and predictable passwords. These accounts are used by your help desk technicians or your network administrator. Right? And once an account is used, the credentials may be repeated across multiple systems in an organization's network, across multiple nodes. Right? So if an attacker, let's say, performs a password spray attack on the local admin account, and is able to compromise the account, the attacker can potentially replay those credentials across multiple systems in an organization and gain more widespread access. Hence, Microsoft proposed a solution called the Local Administrator Password Solution to update the local administrator's passwords on a routine basis. Right? So in this way, we can avoid any password attacks on the local admin account, and we can ensure that strong passwords are being used and are being cycled at the right time on a fixed routine. But the catch here is that the passwords, when LAPS is deployed, are stored in plain text in Active Directory, the MSMCS ADM password attribute, and only eligible users can read it or request its reset. All right, so let's go ahead and perform the attack. So what we're going to do is we are going to log in as an internal user, and we are going to perform reconnaissance for groups with admin password read permission, right? These are groups and users that have read permission on the local administrator's account's password when LAPS is deployed. So once we find the groups, the next immediate step is we would run an MSI application or a Windows installer application to add a backdoor user to the group. Let me actually show you what this means. All right, so Let me head into my VM right here and let me log in as a user called James. All right, so that's James, and let me key in James' password. All right, so once I have logged in onto the VM, let me quickly show you something. So if I open up PowerShell right here, 
let me go ahead and run a command connect user and james and you can see that james is a member of these groups and these groups alone and not an administrator or a privileged user of any kind at least that's what active directory tells me all right now with that clear let me go ahead and show you two modules number one is a power view module that i would be using to query all users and all groups that have read permission on the local administrator's password where labs is deployed all right and i would be using a module called power up to add a backdoor user to a group so let me show you how this attack actually works so this is powershell again so let me go ahead and shift to the desktop because that is where my modules are and let me run a command called import module slash power view dot Right. Now with that done, all I have to do now is simply run a command. Right here you can see that this set, this big nasty one-liner right here, will go ahead and check all OUs within your organization and, and push out any users that have rights on the local administrator part. All right, because labs is typically deployed via GPOs, right? So this command right here will catch the OU where Labs is deployed and also give out the users who have permissions over that OU, meaning who have read permission on the Labs password. So once I click enter, this will take about a second and you can see now that the help is group right here has read permission on the MSMCS admin password. And like I said, the MSMCS admin password stores the local administrator's password in plain text. Now that we have the group, let me actually go ahead and close PowerShell and open a fresh session for you. And let me go ahead, shift the desktop again, and run a command called import module dot slash power up dot ts1. That's done. Let me go ahead and run a command called invoke all check. So what's going to happen now is this script right here, this tool is going to check for any privileges that James may have that, that could have come to mismanaged vulnerabilities, to mismanaged actions, right? So once that's done, let me go ahead and run a command called write user add MSI. And once I click enter, check this out. This was not there when we started, right? So this is an MSI application. Let me go ahead and run the application. Say yes. And now you can see that I can add a user called backdoor123, right? And let me go ahead and clean a password for that user. Let's say password at 123. And let me go ahead and add that user to the help disk group that we have in Active Directory because the help disk group has read password, has read permissions on the password, right? So once I click create, you can see that it is now done. So let me quickly open up my PowerShell right here and let me run a command called net group and let me go ahead and give in the help disk group credentials right here. And you can see that I have a backdoor user right here within the help disk group all right and let me quickly minimize this and show you what the next step of the attack is right now we were able to create and add a backdoor user to the help disk group that has read permission over the password what's the next step the next step is pretty straightforward i will log in as that backdoor user and i will query for the administrator's password. Here is an example that I had performed earlier. So using backdoor at 123 users entry, I was able to query for the administrator's password where Labs was deployed, which was supposedly a security solution, right? Now, there is a major vulnerability that caused this attack. Do you have any guesses? Punch them via chat and let's see if you have this covered in your organization. So let me actually go ahead and show you what caused the attack. So if I head into my VM right here, and this is my VM, right? Let me head into reports, and let me now head into user reports. 
logging in into AD Manager Plus, reports, user reports, and I have something called groups for users right here. And I've selected my user already here called James, and check this out. Um, let me quickly refresh your memory again. If I run a command called netuser James, these are James's memberships, right? And if I check here, we can see that James is a member of Remote Desktop Users. We knew that already. Marketing Sid, Marketing Sid, which in turn is a member of Australia, Australia, which is a member of Managers, and Managers, which is in turn a member of Domain Admins. So I think the picture is quite clear here. Why are Domain Admin privileges? James was able to install and run the MSI application because this is not a normal activity. No user can simply install an MSI application onto their desktop without the administrator's credentials. But James in this case had achieved administrator's credentials via nested memberships. And as an attacker, I could find that out by surveying the network. And now I've used James's account to add a backdoor entry to read the admin's plain text password. So that is what caused the attack. Now, how do we fix problems such as this? We need to employ a three-step approach to fix these management problems. All right, so the first step is to gain insights into your infrastructure. And here are a few ways you can gain insights into your infrastructure. The first thing that I would like for you to do is monitor all of your group memberships, your privileged groups, your cross-domain groups, your groups on other platforms such as Exchange Windows Permissions because your Exchange Windows Permissions group has right access on the domain node. Right? And also, do not forget to check for your nested or your indirect memberships as well. And like I said, that can be done with an AD Manager Plus where all you have to do is head into reports and on the user reports, you have groups for users and users in groups. So using users in groups, you can select the group that you want and all the information is pushed out right in front of you. And this button right here can help you toggle between direct and nested or indirect memberships. All right. So once the information is generated, in order to fix the vulnerability, because I emphasized on fixing the vulnerability, right? all you have to do is simply select and you can carry out the fixing, the corrective measure directly from the place where you have generated the report. And we also have group reports right here. Now these are reports uh, categorized towards group objects, just group objects. Any information that you need about members of groups, you can use these reports, right? So let's head into detailed group members and let's say uh, the administrators group, all right? And now I can check the membership of the administrators group based on certain parameters. For instance, I can exclude these users. I can show only these users and I can show the attributes that I want to see. So that's about it for the first point, your user reports, where you have users in groups and groups of users and your group reports. Monitor all of these memberships and don't forget to check for indirect memberships as well. The second point that I would give you is your user passwords. All right, uh, monitor all of your user passwords. Ensure that your users have strong passwords within your organization. Ensure that your users have changed their passwords on a regular basis. Ensure that you do not have users that haven't changed their passwords in a long time and check your users with password never expires. For example, your service accounts generally have password never expires and it's imperative to check these accounts because these accounts can be abused um, in various attacks. For example, Kerber hosting. All right, and this can be done within AD Manager. So if I head into AD Manager Plus right here, we have something called password reports. All right, but before we get started with this, let me actually tell you how you can track the weak user passwords within your organization. So we give you a free tool called the Weak Password Reporter tool, where all you have to do is give in the information that you need, and this would push out all the users and their passwords. Right? So you can give in your own set of passwords along, and we give you a set of passwords as well. So you can use those passwords where this tool, when it runs to check, would compare those hashes to the hashes in Active Directory. And if the hashes, hashes match, then the tool would push that out in the form of a weak password users report. All right, now let me quickly close this and show you password reports right here. If I click on password unchanged users, you can see that I can select a time frame right here. Let's say the last 30 days or whatever. And I can select an OU and I can select multiple domains if I have them configured as well. And you can see the information is right in front of me. And like always, I can check the information 
and I can fix the vulnerability then and there. No shifting between tabs, no moving between windows, just a single pane of glass. All right, let me head into reports again and we have something called users with password never expires. Now these are typically your service accounts, right? So ensure that these accounts have their passwords reset at fixed intervals to ensure that these accounts are never susceptible to password attacks. And this can be viewed with the users with password never expires report. We also have something called recent logon failures where you can check which account has had an invalid logon attempt, which could be a start of a potential breach. Right, so that is my second point. Check your weak passwords using the weak password reporter tool and leverage the password reports for password status within your organization. All right, now my third point, monitor user creation and modification. You need to know when users are being created within your organization. Right? If an attacker adds a backdoor entry, you must be informed at all times. And also, you need to check your already existing users, especially your privileged users, for manipulation. All right. So let me quickly head into AD Manager Plus here, head into user reports, and you can see that I have something called recently created users right here. So again, you can specify the time period, and all of this information is about your recently created users who were created about 30 days ago. And you can view crucial information such as the member of and you can add more attributes if you wish and to view more information as well. And like always, you can check and you can correct the action directly from the place where you have generated the report. All right, so that would be my second point. Check for user creation and also do not forget to check for user modification. So if I head into reports again, we have something called recently modified users. All right, so I can specify the time right here and once I click generate, this would show me all users that were recently modified. So if an attacker changes a group membership of a user or if an attacker changes the log on log off time of a user, you can immediately be notified. All right, so that is my third point. Check for user creation events and ensure that you also check your users for modification events. My fourth point is your stale user accounts. Your stale user accounts are a sweet spot for attackers because an attacker can compromise a stale user account, log in as that user, and remain invisible to the administrator's eye. So it's imperative to monitor your stale or your inactive user accounts. And this can be done with AD Manager Plus as well. All you have to do is head into AD Manager Plus, reports, and we have something called inactive users right here where you can specify the time and you can subject the users generated to a corrective activity. In this case, disable the users and move them to another OU or delete them. All right, and not just an uh, inactive directory, we can also check stale users in Office 365 as well. All right, so that would be my fourth point. Monitor your stale user accounts. My fifth point would be to check the real last logon. Now pinpointing the last source of logon is often a first step to prevent the spread of malicious activity, especially in multiple domain environments. Now if there is suspicious activity happening, the first thing you would do is trace your way back or walk your way back to the domain controller and find out where it's happening and which user account it's happening under. The only way to do this in Active Directory is by checking the last logon time of every user across multiple domain controllers in order to check the real last logon of that user. But AD Manager Plus does that for you instantly where it queries all the domain controllers configured for the real last logon and it pushes out the user's last logon, right? Such as by the location, the name of the domain controllers, the logon time and more. The next point that I would give you is trim off the fat, right? Trim off the extras within an organization. Whenever user accounts are created, whenever users are onboarded, ensure that these accounts are used, or if they are not used, ensure that they are deleted or disabled. All right, because these accounts generally are created for new joinees that are coming in onto the company, so they have predictable passwords set, and these passwords are, and these accounts are never disabled or deleted. So with an AD Manager Plus again, we have something called users never locked on where you can check all your users 
who have never logged on and you can take the corrective action right here and once the action is done you can also export it in the form of any way you want such as a csv or a pdf file all right so these are a few tips are a few places that i would suggest to look for mismanagement vulnerabilities and to fix them as well directly from the place where you have generated the report all right and the last point that i would give here is monitor your group policies because your group policies are a powerhouse of options that can give your attackers instant access with an active directory so check all of your group policies and ensure that you know whenever there's a change happening within a group policy all right so that ends my first step find valuable insights of where common risk management vulnerabilities occur and fix those problems but this looks very cumbersome right you need to walk in you need to generate the report and then you need to take the action this looks like a very repetitive task right so in order to overcome this we also have automation with an ad manager for example stale account cleaner so ad manager plus can find all your stale users for a specified time from the inactive users report and it can carry cleanup activities and this also works for your active directory your office 365 and your exchange server as well so your hybrid environment can be cleaned here as well another example for automation is automatic group membership management so in this case whenever users are onboarded right you can ensure that the users are added to the correct groups alone or if your users are added to the wrong groups already you can re-edit them and all of this process can be automated but at the same time, your administrator is kept in the loop at all times. All right. So the second fix, you need to secure your permissions. Because like I said, your permissions are equally important in order to pre prevent security breaches on your organization. So you need to secure your permissions. And when I say permissions, I just don't mean your security objects, but also your files and folders. You need to check all of your users and groups that have delegated privileges over OUs. You need to find out individual user permissions over security objects. For example, which user can change the group membership? Which user can read the password of, uh, can reset the password, I'm sorry, of every domain admin, right? And also monitor your file and folder permissions as well, because your file and folders, they hold the gold. They hold the gold for your organization, right? Because your data is your currency. So this is how it can be done with an active directory. So let me quickly head into my VM right here. And as you can see, this is my VM. The only way to do this in active directory is let's address the security objects permissions first, right? So if I open ADUC, all you have to do is right click on the OU properties and you have to head in to the security tab and check the permission for all users manually within an organization, right? So this is very time consuming and I would definitely not recommend this for a full blown enterprise environment. But if I head into the domain node here, right click properties, security, advanced permissions, and if I head into effective access right here, right? So I can select the user that I want, let's say James. And once I click do effective access, this would push out James's effective access over the organization, right? So these are James's permission over every object within the organization. But let me tell you that the names are not given. The names of the OUs are not specified here. And these, the, this, the report that is generated right in front of you, right? The affected access report does not check the sub OU permissions. Only the parent OU permissions are checked. So in order to overcome this, we need a more easier method, right? We need a method so where we can survey permissions on our security objects and our files and folders. Because when I talk about files and folders, the only way to check permissions again is to use scripting or to check the security tab. So let's go ahead and see how we can view permissions with an AD manager. So let me head into my browser right here, head into reports and head into security reports right here. And let's go ahead and search for a few permissions. So I have my OU right here. I have a user called Luna. And once I click generate, all of Luna's permissions over that OU and also the sub OUs will be pushed up. All right. So if I click on this right here, you can see that Luna 
as we set password permission over the subway. But what did Active Directory tell me? Luna has only read permission over the parent OU, right? The sub OUs also matter, and you need to know what kind of permission that that user or group has over the sub OUs. So that's your security reports. Using your security reports, you can find out all permissions that your objects have in Active Directory just by using this one tab. And we also have NTFS reports, which addresses a problem of file server permissions. Because like I said, the only way to check file server permissions is by checking the security tab of every file and folder. But by using AD Manager Plus, let's say if I head into folders accessible by accounts, right? I have a user account and I have a folder path right here. And once I click generate, you can see that the user, Luna in this case, has control over company confidential folder the first subfolder, the second, and the third, because I have specified all subfolder levels right here. And if I click on view permissions, you can see that Luna has read permission on a confidential subfolder within the organization. So this is granular permission viewing for all file servers within your organization. All right. So this is how you can view permissions, both for security objects using the security reports and the NTFS reports for your file servers using AD Manager Plus. So how do you fix them, right? Because fixing permissions is equally important. Here are a few ways that you could fix permissions. The first thing that I would like for you to do is implement least privileged access. Least privileged access for all of your Active Directory objects, files, and folders, and ensure that your users only have the required access. Nothing more, nothing less. Set time-bound access. The problem that most organizations face is users are given permissions, right? And permissions, once granted, are not always ungranted, which is a security risk. So you need a way to set time-bound permissions because permissions, once granted, can automatically be revoked or removed after a specified time period. And this can be done with an AD Manager. So let me quickly head into AD Manager head into the management tab, all right? So let's address the first problem, implementing least privileged access. So if I head into file server management right here, and let's say modify NDFS permissions. Over here, you can select the folder that you want or any server. You can specify the permissions that you want. And once you click modify, the permissions can be modified across folders, across any file server within your organization just by using this window. We also have special checkboxes here. For instance, include inheritable permissions from, the, from this parent's object. So when you check this box, only the inheritable permissions will be included. And if you check the second box here, which is remove all existing permissions and apply only the above permissions, what happens here is the folder's ACL structure would be reset and the permissions that you have specified here will only be applied. And if you have a folder with least privileged access already implemented, you can simply copy the permissions from the folder right here and let that apply to the selected folders here. So that's file and folder permission viewing using NTFS reports and complete restructuring of file and folder permissions using the file server management tab. Now I also spoke about time-based access, right? So how does that work? If I head into workflow right here, you can see that if I had to create request, and let's go ahead and say uh, add to a group, right? So a requester who is no one but an active directory user configured as a requester can request an object addition to a group, right? For whatever reason, for a specified reason or for, for a specified time. And once the time is done, and once the duration specified here is up, the user is automatically removed from the group, all right? And this is very secure because it goes through multiple people within the organization. So a request a request an access, a reviewer reviews it, and you can set the level that you want, and the executor only has the final set. Right? Only when the executor approves would the activity be carried out. And we also have something called set folder permission, which operates on the same logic again, where you can select the folders that you want, you can specify the permission that you want for a duration that you want. All right, so this is how you can secure permissions on your AD objects and your files and folders. Implement least privileged access and set time-bound access 
and you can fix your file and folder permissions with the AD management tab and you can set time bound access for your files and folders and for your groups. But I would also say to ensure that you secure your permissions for your active directory objects as well. Ensure that you have these privileged access implemented there as well. All right. So a quick summary of what we saw. We saw that a single mismanagement action could be the reason for a large scale security breach, right? Or could basically act as a catalyst or could act as a speeding agent and increase the radius of a breach. And in order to overcome this, we set up a structured approach where first we gained insights on all critical parts of our infrastructure and we secured them with effective management strategies and vulnerability fixes. And then we secured our permissions. We learned to view our permissions with ease using the reports and we secured them using the management app. All right, are we done? Just one more step. It's crucial to have a backup. It's crucial to have a restore point or a safety net to jump back in the event of a security breach or a data failure. All right, because there is more than one way damage can be inflicted on Active Directory and it's not always an attacker. It can also be an honest process mistake. Right? And according to a Forrester Market study, the downtime that is caused by ransomware or vengeful employees or genuine IT process mistakes can cost up to 3.5 million per hour. And manually finding and fixing deleted user accounts, groups or OUs is very, very cumbersome and very error prone. So AD Manager Plus offers you an option with complete backup and recovery. So administrators, let me quickly show that to you. If I head into the backup tab right here. So administrators can back up your Active Directory objects, your users, your computers, your contacts, your groups, your DNS nodes. And this is attribute level backup, right? So you can back up, you can set up complete backups, or you can also set up incremental backups and you can readily view the changes and restore them whenever necessary. Right? And the best part here is that this is restart free backup and restore. All right, so that is my final point. Complete backup for a plan B, for a safety net, right? To have a restore point just in case. Now, before I end today's webinar, I would like to tell you that we have awesome offers coming up. So kindly check out the link right here and you can find out exciting discounts and offers on our AD and IT security suit. And before I close today's webinar, I will be pushing out two quick polls, right? Now these polls can help me determine, uh, help us help the internal marketing team basically. So I'll just push out a poll. And when I push a poll, you will see a question flash across your screen. And I would request you to reply to that question. So this could be of tremendous help for us. All right, so I will be pushing out the first poll right now. Just, just punch in the answers on the poll so this can be helpful. Thank you, thank you so much. That's great. Now I would push out the second poll as well. I will be closing the first poll and I would push out the second poll right here. Please punch in your answers so this can be a little helpful for us. Thank you so much. Now I have pushed out the discount link via chat as well. So you can check it out and you can see if it is of help to you. So I will be closing the second poll and I have pushed out the discount link via chat as well. And that's about it, right? So thank you so much for listening. My name is Abhilash and my email ID is abhi at manageengine.com. So if you've got any questions, please keep them coming in via chat. I will be available here for the next five, five to 10 minutes. And I would be more than happy to take your questions. Or if you have, if you get questions later, or if you have anything to ask me about just punch in your questions via my, to my email ID. That's abhi at manageengine.com and I would be more than happy to help you out. All right, so thank you so much for listening. Um, I would be online here again for the next five to 10 minutes and have a great day ahead. Mm -hmm.